The Staffordshire Bull Terrier is a fascinating breed and it's a breed that's near and dear to my heart growing up in Staffordshire. And in today's video, we're gonna be looking at some fascinating facts about the Staffordshire Bull Terrier that you probably didn't even know. Welcome back to The Staffy Show, and this channel is dedicated to helping you learn everything you could ever want to know about the incredible Staffordshire Bull Terrier. So I'm gonna hand you now over to one of my breed history experts who's gonna break down some fascinating facts about the Staffy. Number one, they beat BSL. BSL, which stands for Breed Specific Legislation, is essentially a set of legal procedures that put limits on, occasionally bans, on owning certain breeds of dogs. In the UK, there are four outright banned breeds under the Dangerous Dog Acts. Three Mastiff type dogs, the Japanese Tosa Inu, the Dogo Argentino, and the Fila Brasileiro. And one bully breed, the notorious American Pit Bull Terrier. In 2018, PETA, People for the Ethical Treatment of Animals, attempted to have the Staffy added to this list. Due almost entirely to conflation of all bully breeds with the pit bull, and specifically pit bulls designed for fighting, they claimed that staffies were dangerous and destined for suffering in life as a result of unsavoury breeding practices and purposes. Thankfully, more authoritative bodies such as the RSPCA and the Kennel Club, as well as rescue organisations like the Dogs Trust and the Blue Cross, all contested the claim, and it was promptly thrown out. In March of the same year, as if to prove a point, a staffie called Cooper became the first police dog in Staffordshire, which really felt like justice. There have been no further attempts to limit staffie ownership. And indeed, there are regular attempts to reverse or reformulate bully BSL in the UK, in the UK for the sake of living dogs labelled dangerous on the basis of their looks. Number two, they were slow to catch on. Despite being the 10th most popular breed in the UK now, the Staffy was not always so welcomed into the world's hearts and onto the world's hearths. Indeed, despite existing in one form or another for nearly 100 years, there was no official Staffy Club or even Kennel Club recognition in their home country of England until 1935. This is likely due to their appearance and name, making their ancestors' history of blood sport pugnacity very difficult to ignore, even when looking at their sweet faces. Another contributing factor was likely the sheer number of bull and terrier dogs around, with no single stable type and little to recommend one version over another in the late 19th century. It took even longer for the Staffy to take hold in America because they already had their own supersized version, the American Staffordshire Terror which the AKC recognised in 1936 as just the Staffordshire Terrier. And so the OG Staffy seemed superfluous to requirements until 1974, making them the 121st breed to be recognised. Indeed, they're still only 75th most popular in the US, so there's still work to do. And number three, they are not the Amstaff. Despite the similarity in their name, which was a deliberate move on the part of the American Staffordshire Terrier's pioneers who wanted to pay homage to the, re uh, to the origin of the breed they were developing, these dogs are not the same. Amstaffs, apart from being infinitely more popular in their home country than they are in the UK, where they are almost never recognised on site, are on average twice the size of the English Staffy. They are also slightly more driven and serious than the Staffy, but other than this, are difficult to tell apart. Indeed, distinguishing between the Staffy and the Amstaff, not to mention the American Bully and the Pit Bull, is so difficult, there are often legal issues here in the UK due to the aforementioned BSL. Big Staffies, which are frequently Kennel Club registered Amstaffs, are often seized by the police as Pit Bull type dogs, and even sometimes destroyed as a result of this physical similarity. This is perhaps one of the reasons why classic Staffies are kept deliberately on the smaller, side by conscientious breeders. Regardless of controversy and possible injustice, it is important to recognise the differences between these breeds and all so-called bully breeds while we're at it. So guys, I hope you enjoyed that video. And if you love the Staffordshire Bull Terrier as much as I do, don't forget to subscribe to this channel, like the video, because we can't wait to see you here on the next episode.